Hey there. Thanks for dropping in. Come on down. Yeah. Good to see you. Glad you're here. Well, I think this is episode 30. And I know that I'm recording this on a Saturday instead of a Friday because this is the last day of April. Tomorrow is the 1st of May. And I usually record these on Friday, but uh, I was busy yesterday doing something, but I don't even remember now what, which is a big problem with older folks in short-term memory. But um, this is the episode that's leading up to the fact that I'm going to finally get a job, and that's just exciting as heck to me. So let's tell, let me tell you the story about how all that happened. I'm in Fort Worth working in Dallas, mostly. Uh, I'm going back and forth. It seems like I'm hardly ever at home. I believe I got a little bit of sympathy from my dad because he was such a big part of our world. And he was also helping me pay for these last three or four thousand dollars worth of instructor, commercial, multi-engine instructor, instrument instructor. I mean, all these rides and check rides and preparation. You had to have so many dollars of duel for each of these things. And it was costing a lot of money. He helped me paid for it. And then he asked me again, are you sure you want to get a flying job? And I have to say something. My dad, even though his main business with so many years was dealing with corporate pilots, filling up corporate airplanes, working on them, etc. And heck, half of his great friends were also corporate pilots, not to mention the man I'm going to tell you about today, who was a very special person in my dad's life. Okay. My dad didn't like corporate pilots, or he, did, he liked them, he just didn't really want me to be one. He kind of had a feeling, and he made it as an aside and mentioning before, that he didn't think the corporate pilots were much more than sort of like limousine drivers, except that you've got much nicer equipment, you might say. Well, I understand how he felt, and it was not like, you know, he was a self-made man, owned his own businesses, and had made young fortunes doing what he did. But, you know, we're not our fathers, and I wanted a job, and he finally acquiesced and did what I knew he could have done a long time ago, which was make a political phone call. And the reason I say that, and I've said it now twice in two episodes, uh, the previous and this one, is because if you think that meritocracy is an important thing in most of the things in the world, well, you're mistaken. Because most good jobs in the world for things that are tight-knit groups of law firms and doctor's practices and pilots and flight ins and corporate pilots, you know, I would say 80% of the time you didn't get the job because they were just looking for somebody and you were handsome and the most qualified. No, unfortunately, 80% of the time you get the damn job because of some political connection. In other words, somebody called somebody and got, you got the job. Dad makes a call to a man named Big Deal Goodwin. Big Deal Goodwin was the guy in the pork pie hat when he was just a young boy that used to be in the airplane with my dad when they would go off uh, barnstorming throughout Kansas and Oklahoma. And he was the kid that would jump out of the airplane, take the tickets at the gate when people would come out to the field to take a ride. And then when they'd run out of gas, Deal would have to take the two gas cans and run into town and bring back gasoline for the airplane. So he was an important person in my dad's life. He was, he didn't have any parents, and so he lived with my dad's first wife, who we lovingly called, used to call Aunt Ruth. And so Big Deal grew up in the house with my dad. My dad taught him to fly. My dad got him a mechanic job, a flying job, got his very first flying job flying uh, originally. And then Deal went on to work for the military. And then he was actually at one time the base commander, commander at Chenault Field, a place where they did all the jumping off field for all the airplanes that went to Europe during the war. He had been working in the corporate pilot world since the war. He had been working mostly for a family named West down in Houston that were famous. You can Google them. Diamond Jim West, his son, Silver Dollar Jim West, the West Enterprises, the West family. And Big Deal was their corporate pilot for decades and decades and a very big important part of their flight operation. One of the biggest flight operations in Houston. So Deal had left that job and gone to work for Time Life magazine. 
East Tex Paper Company and East Systems Incorporated. They had their own town practically. They had their own airport over in East Texas in a little town called Evadale. They had big hangars and two jets and three singles, uh, a King Air and offices and it was real near the corporate offices for the East Texas Paper Company, East East Sex. So that's where I had to go to talk to Big Deal. Well, my dad had made a phone call and asked Deal if he would talk to me about a flying job. And he said, tell that old boy to fly down here. So dad, I borrowed one of dad's Aronka sedans. Looks like this. A sedan is kind of like a champ, which looks like this, except it seats four people got a 154 horsepower engine and often used up in the bush world of Alaska for putting them on floats. Very popular airplane. We had two of them. And uh, so I get in one of those sedans, <clears throat> pardon me, and I take off for Eva Dale, Texas. I have an appointment to see Big Deal Goodwin. I'm so excited, I gotta tell you, um, my mouth is so dry, I couldn't make spit. I was nervous, this is be like, the, don't blow this, this is your one shot, big boy. And so I'm flying off to Evadale in this sedan, old rag wing airplane built in about 45, 46. And now it's, you know, 71, four, yes. August of 74, I told you that before. And as a matter of fact, it's written here in the book. So I fly off down to Evadale, Texas, and um, the flight down to Evadale is a little interesting in that I've flown a lot over Texas, but I hadn't paid much attention because when you fly a sedan, you don't go very high. And so I'm flying over the biggest damn pine forest you ever saw in your life, East Texas Piney Woods. You've heard about them, but you have no idea that you don't see nothing but trees. I mean nothing. The towns are buried down in those trees, ranches and farms and houses, but you don't see that. You just see trees. So you fly down there for, you know, about 300 miles, I guess, to Evadale and land on his airport. This, they've got their own air, long airport there. Pull in the flight operation. A fella gives me a ride over to the office and Big Deal has this Big Deal office over at the main office for the East Tex Paper Company. He is the chief pilot and aviation guru for this company. Now this company has a Bach 111. That's a great big jet. Big like you see airlines people. They have a Hawker 125. It's another jet. They have a King Air uh, A100. They have, uh, and then Big Deal's got his own personal 182 there that's all painted pink and white, and he calls it Pinky. But it was a gift from Mr. West when he left the employment. They gave him that airplane. It's the kind of folks you're working for. So anyway, I go to have this interview with Big Deal. He's all dressed up in a beautiful suit and a double-breasted, and he's, of course, a big, tall, dark-headed, half-Indian man and uh, who I'd only met a few times and had the highest, most greatest regard and respect for because of the jobs he's had, who he's flown for, where he's gone in the world. This man's been around the world many times flying people. And so here I am talking with Big Deal Goodwin, who also obviously has this inbred, I mean, innate de desire to, to please my dad because my dad had never called him and asked him for anything before. So Roy Taylor calls Big Deal and says, would you help my boy see if he can find a flying job? Well, just watch me get to Big Deal's desk, talk to him for a few minutes, and he asked me, he said, would I be willing to take a job flying a King Air? A King Air, are you kidding? I've been flying rattle trap, twin beaches and three tens and single engines and now a job flying a King Air? He said, well, the man I used to work for, uh, of course the brother died, Jim West, the one they call Silver Dollar, he died recently, and his brother, his name is Wesley West, and they have a King Air, an A-90 King Air, that's their family airplane, and for their business, they still have their West business. And uh, anyway, uh, a friend of mine who's been retired, uh, that used to work for Cameron Iron, uh, by the name of Ben Clapp, he's been filling in and just helping Mr. West till they could really find another pilot. And um, I think we maybe have a position there. Oh my God flying for the West family in Houston, Texas on a Kinger A90. I mean, I was hearing all this, and I gotta tell you, I mean, my eyes were practically flipping around like a, I'm here, and I mean, I'm just, I'm just a brandy spanky new, just had my commercial license since last April. I mean, new flight instructor, new everything. Don't hardly have but about 300 hours in my logbook. 
you're supposed to have 1,500 hours to be really qualified to fly and work for a corporation like this. So he said, well, if you're interested, let's go talk to Mr. West. Of course, and I'm just like, today, right now? He, so he picks up the phone, calls the office, you know, asks for Mr. West on the phone. He says, you know, he calls him by his first name. I'm like, whoa. Hey, Wesley, I've got a young man here I think may be the right pick for us. Um, he's a real good friend of, or he's a son of a real good friend of mine. He said, uh, what about the, talking to us this afternoon for a few minutes? That's fine. And I'm, we'll see you then. Of course, and I'm sitting there at his desk thinking, I'm in Evadale, Texas, and we're going to have this meeting with this man in Houston in a few minutes. Well, he must have some plans I don't know about. So he calls the hangar down where I parked my airplane, where their operation is for their flight ops, and he hit, hasn't pulled the Kinger out. Okay, so we drive back down the car, 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 company car that picked me up, picks both of us up, and takes us back to their flight operations. We get in their King Air A90, I mean A100, he puts me in the pilot seat, shows me how to start it. I never even started a turbine engine in my life says do this and do this and start it. So we taxi out to the end of the runway, take off, has me take it off. He sort of trims it up and he says, you got it, just don't, just don't give up if it's he's kind of heavy. And of course, this is a big airplane compared to anything I've flown. And so I start back, pull up and this thing starts climbing and I mean gear up and we're going over the tops of those high, high pine trees. I lick it, he split. He's on the radio talking. I'm turning, trying to figure out what in the world is all this. And so we're turning and he's talking and I'm flying to Houston Hobby from here, which is about 23 minutes. Zoom. So we climb up to probably very little altitude, called approach, come in and land at Houston Hobby. Mr. West had sent a car to the airport. Now this is, a, they have limousines and drivers for both the home and for the house. Now you gotta appreciate, I've never been, I've never much been surrounded by billionaires and their habits and enclave. But so we get to the office after this limousine, literally a long stretch limousine, drives us to Mr. West's office. We get out, we go into this office, there's this big desk and two secretaries over here sitting in this big ass room with a fireplace at one end. And he's over there, an old man with white hair pulled back and drinking a tab. Big deal told me that Mr. West loves tabs. Be sure to keep him on the airplane. So, like he thought I was already gonna get this job that I hadn't even interviewed for. So he walks over and we sit down and we start John with Mr. West, talking about old times. He's talking with Deal about, do y'all remember the time we flew to somewhere? Of course, and this was all, because Wesley grew up with Deal flying their family airplane. And now these both older men, of course, Mr. West is ancient. And so they chat and said, well, I'm sure he'll be fine. So. He says, well, let's get the, old, get the boy started. What do you want to do first? And Dill suggested, just right there, he said, well, uh, Wesley, there's an air show coming up over in Lake Charles here in, in about a week. Uh, let's fly over there. We'll get a chance for you to see how this Taylor boy flies. And uh, in fact, I'll go with you. I want to go see that air show. And they, they, of course, Wesley, that he's going to be doing something with Dill, he's just as excited as anybody. And he says, that sounds great, Dill. And he gets up, shakes my hand, and says, we're glad to have you aboard. And of course, I'm still just reeling. I left Fort Worth, Texas this morning thinking I was going to fly down and talk to a man about possibly getting a job. And now I'm sitting in some billionaire's office, and he's telling me that we're going to an air show. We did. Deal flies over in Pinky and gets picked up it, when we leave and Mr. West comes out in a limousine and we get on the King Air and we get in my very first trip and we take off and fly from Houston to Lake Charles. And King Air is a turboprop airplane made by Beach. And in Deal, instead of getting up here and sitting in the seat and flying with me, he sits in the back with Mr. West scared the living crap out of me because I thought Deal would kind of give me a heads up on what all we're doing up here. And he just hollers out from the back seat, Taylor, you holler at me if you need anything. Now, if there's anything that's confusing. God, I'm so completely overtaken and over. But this story, as it unfolds about me trying to figure out how to fly a king here, 
and then how I finally end up making a bunch of trips with a man named Ben Clapp, who I've got to tell you all about. He's just a case and big deal. And going to an air show and what happened when we get there, I'll tell you all about in the next episode because I don't want to talk too long. I already talked too much. I just know that I really like telling you these stories and I got so many more stories to tell you, you can't even believe it. And it's all because of the book. And by the way, <clears throat> I may begin the next video. You'll look on the titles because in the world of hangar flying, which is what we're doing here, I'm telling you stories about my previous aviation experiences. There's an old joke. In fact, there's a book out there. I'm going to find it somehow. And the title of the book is There I Was. That's the title of it. Because every pilot and aviator is always sitting around the hangar holding up his hand like this going, well, there it was about, about 8,000 feet and see how it was coming. And so it always begins with, well, there I was. Well, there's a lot of there I was. And when I was there, I want to tell you the story. So come back when you can and we'll tell that story then. So long.